my favourite book that I've, I've, I've produced is a collection of, of short stories or the stories that I've done on businesses that I've been able to draw um, business lessons from. Max, Levi Samson's here. Levi. Thank you. Good to finally Hello, mate. Max. How are you doing? Good, Coming good. across Levi nice. has been like a breath of fresh air. He's the next generation. So what kind of uh, angle are you looking for with uh, this piece that you're wanting to write here? The model that he's developed with the ownership from the factory floor, um, it's a model that I think that works and I think they're going to end up having uh, a successful timber lumber pulp company that will end up being the envy of the world. So Max, one of the things that I find fascinating about you is you started as a tax accountant and now you're writing books and that's definitely not the normal progression of things. The greatest compliment that normally gets paid to me is that you're not like other accountants. Um, sometimes I have a personality, unfortunately a lot of accountants <laughs> don't have that. But sure. um, Levi is very much an old head on young shoulders. He's walking the talk, which is very hard in business these days. You have to be passionate about things to have success in anything. Right. And you're clearly passionate about your business side of things, so Absolutely. that might be a good one for you to end up looking at. We'll definitely have to read that. So listen, uh, I would also like to take a bottle of wine back for my cellar, something that I can't get at home. Is there anything that you could recommend? Well, you've picked the right state. I don't care what the other states in Australia say. We're still, I think, make the best premium wines. And I think uh, we've got Domaine Chandon here, which makes some really good local bubbly. Hopefully we'll uh, get off and uh, try a, a bit of a sample. You can take a few home for the cellar. Yeah, that sounds good. Australia is the driest continent on the face of the earth. And that's why we only have 18 million or so people for a land mass that's the same size as the United States. Max was going to write an article on the employee-owned models that I'm involved with. And then he asked us if we wanted to go around to some wineries. And he was a great host, took us around. Being a local, he knew exactly where to go for some really scenic views. So we were looking down on the valley in a, numerous locations. And that was really awesome. The Yarra Valley is a perfect place to go to escape the city. And you get to sample some of Australia's finest wines. So we're at Chandon, which is in the Yarra Valley, founded in 1985. Uh, our friends in California, Brazil and Argentina came before us. It's, um, it's a fantastic cool climate region. Winemaking here goes back to 1840. So it's not a new thing here. You know, you look outside and you see the hills and the valleys. That's what makes the Yarra Valley so special. It has this immense flexibility. I think overall it's a very high quality region. That's what characterises it. The secret to making fantastic sparkling wine is to have diversity in the fruit that you use. And that gives you lots of options to blend an amazing final blend. And what that means is that when we get to the stage where we're putting together or blending the final wine, we might have anything up to 120 different base wines. A lot of quality in making wines is just about editing. It's taking out what you don't like and, and keeping the very finest and the best. Okay, so we're in the Riddling Hall at the moment and what's fantastic about the architecture and the, uh, the layout of this site is it's a merging of our French heritage and this is evocative of the caves of Champagne which are very famous. Together with, you can see architectural features outside of the building that are characteristically Australian. So we draw the two together, merging our heritage with the sort of spirit of Australian winemaking. The wine that you're going to have a look at here is our Prestige Cuvée. It's uh, the most premium of all of our wines. It's, it's been ageing for seven years on yeast in the bottle, which is a really long time. Our vintage tier wines age for three years and our non-vintage for 18 months. So during that time it develops complexity and, uh, and flavour, but you can't make one every year. So 2002 it was a very cool year and you need that coolness to be able to age it, to get the fine flavours to be able to age it for a long time. So what is the proper way to taste champagne? Ah, the same way as anything else. You just swill it in your glass, have a smell, see if you like the smell, and then you taste. Yeah, I love this wine, but it's definitely a bottle I think we're going to take home with us. Be my guest. <laughs> we would love you to take one home to Canada. Oh, that's great. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming to visit us. Cheers. Well, it's been a wine growing region for more than 150 years. It's uh, started off in the early 1800s. Thank, Thank you. you. And um, ended up uh, 
producing some premium wines back in the late 1800s. In fact, it won a prize at a Paris wine show that they had to produce the packing box to prove it was an upstart Aussie that had actually won the prize. It's certainly a premium wine growing uh, area and uh, always will be. So we've started with a well-known premium bubbly and we're about to go on to a nice small run family farm that has a beautiful intense red. Cheers. 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 Yeah, we had a lot of fun going around to the wineries. One was a high-end international winery where the other one was a small family-owned winery so we got very different ends of the spectrum. Okay guys, this is the winery I was telling you about. The um, little boutique family-owned winery. And the unique thing about this winery, apart from it being boutique, is it doesn't irrigate. The vines are purely dependent on, on the rainfall, and as a result, what you get is a very intense wine. It's all about quality, not quantity here. Um, so, Hi. Oh. Hi, welcome Leanne. to Waramate. I'm Leanne. Levi. Levi, nice to meet you. Suzanne. Suzanne. Suzanne, lovely to meet you folks. Would you like to come inside and have a tasting with us and that try some wonderful be. wine? That's why we're here. Definitely. Okay, Thank well come you. on along. I enjoyed seeing the contrast between the two different wineries that were practically next door. Yeah, it's something to really sit back and appreciate with a really fine meal. Drink and enjoy and welcome to Waramate. Thank, Thank you. you. And I shall partake with you. It's got some wonderful lengths to it, as you can see. So what did the lengths mean? Uh, just the alcohol content and the volume, and it's called viscosity. It's a typical, probably more a cool climate Shiraz. And the fact that we don't irrigate is that you're getting lots of rich fruit flavors that actually come through. So hmm. it, being from the old vines, it's got a lot more depth to it, a lot more character and a lot more structure coming through. Well, you're right. This is the perfect bottle to take home. Yeah? I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, it's fabulous. When you go and, and you visit a, a winery and you get to meet the people who actually run the place, there's, a, there's like a sense of intimacy or a connection that <laughs> you take away with you. My glass has got a hole in it. It's gone. Oh, would you like some more? Yeah, thank you. No, it's a pleasure. $50 a shot. <laughs> Coming here from Australia is completely different. If we come ostensibly to help them, but I can guarantee you we learn more from them. I've been to remote places, but nothing quite like this. If this was in North America, you would not be allowed within 50 miles of this place. 